Thank you Brilliant. so much. Yeah, we've all had to become experts in Zoom in a very short time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it's wonderful to me. I haven't had a chance to meet you yet, apart no, from just no. now. But uh, thanks so much. Uh, yeah. Aladdin has kindly connected us together. So I'm just going to pass it over to you. Uh, yeah. Feel free to use the time however you wish. And yes. Uh, yeah. Thanks so much uh, for for inviting me and uh, just uh, just referring to the practice that uh, Jane just led us through. Uh, someone uh, taught me that practice about 25 years ago, uh, and it, I can I can uh, with, I can be witness that uh, yes, this has to also transformed my life. I really thoroughly recommend that meta practice that she just uh, taught so beautifully. So thank you for that. So my name is uh, Lucia van der Drift, and you can also see this uh, word Yashabodi, which is my Buddhist name. I'm a teacher of uh, mindfulness, meditation, and also um, of Buddhism. And uh, in the last um, a few years, I've been uh, very much focusing on um, Buddhist tools and mindfulness tools in relation to difficult emotions and having really discovered uh, many, many that can have a, a really a massive effect. And um, I have taught uh, mindfulness um, for difficult emotion courses at um, the Royal Free Hospital for staff before the pandemic. And since the big pandemic started, I've been uh, doing a weekly class online for the West London Buddhist Center, also focusing on the, on um, the Buddhist tools uh, working for uh, difficult emotions. And I must say, uh, I think there's a lot of scope at the moment uh, for us to, to practice with difficult emotions, uh, with all the, the uncertainty and fear and stress this, the, that the pandemic has brought along. But uh, uh, personally, uh, I've had some scope working um, with my difficult emotions uh, a bit earlier on today, thinking like, why did I actually say yes to giving this short talk? But uh, I, I am also very grateful. It's good to have a bit of a challenge uh, now and again. But uh, my main um, practice, I could say at the moment, is um, turning towards my experience with kindness. Uh, so working moment by moment, um, yeah, if I catch myself, uh, turning towards my experience with kindness. And uh, so that's what I'm hoping to uh, speak about. And uh, so the title um, of my talk, um, I hope that I can actually hear, The Kind Light of Awareness. Uh, this is all I understand this whole day has come into being in the course of, uh, of a week. So that's amazing. Uh, so the title of my talk just came into being a few a few days ago. The kind light of awareness and it's turning towards the difficult uh, with kindness. And uh, just to say that kindness, uh, I think, is an emotion. And in, in Buddhism, it's seen as a fundamental positive emotion. And every human being has the potential to develop this difficult emotion. So in the seed, in the potential, we all have this uh, kindness uh, in ourselves, which is, I think, amazing in itself. And uh, you can strengthen it in many ways. And for instance, by uh, using a practice like uh, Jane just led us through, uh, a meta, meta practice. But let's first connect to kindness as a word. And I was just wondering if you would indulge me and just uh, put into the chat a, a word that comes up uh, in you to describe what we're talking about when we're talking about kindness. So it would be great just to see a few uh, people might just want to put a word in the chat, like any kind of uh, synonym or paraphrase for, for this word, kindness. Okay, let me just see what's in the chat. I've got, thank you so much. It's always so lovely to, to people actually responding uh, to, uh, to a query like this. Let's see, we've got peace, harmony and care. Yeah, love, lovely, softening, caring and compassion and loving and compassion and helpfulness and connection and warmth and joy and empathy and compassion and empathy and love and calm. Well, in itself, that's, I just love it. I just love it that you come up with all of this. And, um, and I think between us, we're coming up with quite a, quite a good, uh, good way of, uh, of referring to what is it actually that we're talking about forgiveness we have here as well. 
So you could say friendliness and there is warmth. I love that as well. And you could say goodwill or appreciation, benevolence, fellowship, care. I love that. I think somebody uh, just put care and I, I personally love that word care. I think it's important to, to somehow connect uh, with a concept like that. Sometimes you can have a word like kindness and it doesn't really resonate with you, but you find another word that does resonate with you like care or, or softening or any of those beautiful words we've seen in the chat. But let's also try to connect now to kindness on the, so we've connected to it on a cognitive level. Let's connect to it on the level of how does it feel in the body? So let's see if we can connect to this care and warmth and love, uh, compassion, forgiveness, benevolence, everything that we've seen in the chat. Can some people now chime in in the chat? Like, how does it actually feel in the body? How, what do you feel in the body when, uh, when you're experiencing this kindness that we've, we're talking about? So anyone, ease, oh, that's lovely. Yeah, ease, warm and relaxed. Anyone else? Without pain, oh, that's lovely as well. Like this ease, a sense of ease and warm and fuzzy and warmth and grounded and clear, clear clarity, happiness. Oh, thanks so much. That's lovely. So we're reading a few words. Obviously, we need to use words. But how does it feel in the body? And you can actually uh, just, I think, connect more deeply with kindness when we're actually feeling it in the body. So I could say a lot of these uh, terms that we've seen in the chat are doing it for you. But for me, it might be different for you. Or maybe just right now, you're not connecting to kindness, which is completely possible. But just know it's there. It's there in the background somehow. So... I would say, in my experience at least, it feels like opening and connecting. It feels like some sort of spaciousness and even some sort of lightness. That's how, how it feels uh, to me in the body. And it seems like the nature of, of kindness is that, that uh, connecting and, and opening. And there's always a way back. And that's the lovely thing about it, feeling it in the body. You can always find your way back at some point to, to this kindness. It's there. And everybody can, can be kind and everybody can develop this. But with difficult emotions such as anger, what seems to happen is uh, you get completely caught up in it somehow. And even all awareness might go. You might not be aware of being angry or being jealous or anything like that. And or we're pushing it away or ignoring it or not wanting to know it and numbing it. Um, and I'd say that uh, for the difficult emotion in the body, it feels like uh, contracting, it feels a bit like uh, separating, uh, but also under the influence of the difficult emotion, our perspective seems to narrow down. And also, and this is from the Buddhist uh, uh, tradition at least, it seems like when there is a difficult emotion, strong difficult emotion going on, it somehow distorts your, your view. It narrows your perspective. And I quite like uh, what the last speaker just said, Jane, uh, something you said something about a circle of, of loneliness and unhappiness, which also for me showed that that is like uh, things have narrowed down, things have contracted. So we're trying to, when the difficult emotion comes up, relate to the difficult emotion with kindness. And when we do that, it seems like that perspective kind of opens up there, but a bit more light comes in. And uh, so we're trying to, with mindfulness training particularly, turn the mind towards the difficult emotion. And usually, as I think I said before, we are we're tending to push it away and not acknowledging it. So it's a bit counterintuitive. But yet, if we're turning away from it, it doesn't mean it's going away. So there is some healing in, in connecting with it and turning towards it with kindness, like befriending it rather than it being uh, your enemy. And sometimes the difficult emotion can be a bit too overpowering. Then we just need to take ourselves off for a walk or have a bath or uh, listen to some nice music. But if we do practice mindfulness, uh, we can start to turn our attention towards that uh, that difficult emotion and, and soften it up somehow through doing that and opening the perspective uh, through doing that. 
Yeah. So the, the skill is really when you are having a difficult emotion to remember that this is a possibility. So sometimes you're so caught up, you don't even think about the possibility of turning towards your emotion with some sort of kindness. But if you do practice it uh, a bit regularly, you could be playful with it or uh, you could just try it out. If we practice it, um, we do and we remember it does really have I think, um, a very strong effect. And particularly um, how I'm using it at the moment is like when I'm catching myself um, having harsh thoughts, for instance, I just bring some kindness to it and see what happens. And usually something else starts happening. I'm not in that sort of groove, habitual groove, but in, um, I'm in another more creative space where I can take a different decision and uh, take a different action. And I think sometimes what I've noticed, especially people practicing mindfulness, that it seems like mindfulness, our habitual tendencies to be a bit harsh and critical and judgmental can sort of come in with the practicing mindfulness. And, and my uh, image for this is like a spotlight or like maybe a, a flashlight or whatever you call that. A torch, that's it, a torch, a torchlight. So let's say we've got this torchlight and we're shining it on our experience and suppose it's like a white harsh light and it, you shine it onto something and it's like ugly and there's also sort of shadows that shouldn't be there. Do you get a distorted view? But if we shine the light of our uh, awareness, our mindfulness onto our experience with warmth and care and support like a warm torchlight, then it's a very different picture, isn't it? And then we start to befriend and we start to relate and coming out of that enclosed space that the difficult emotion has, has uh, put us in. Yeah, um, so like, uh, like any kind of uh, mindfulness practice, yes, it really is about trying this out, playing with it, and, and creating the habit of turning towards this um, a difficult experience with kindness. So in that sense, it is, it is a skill. Now, um, I'm, uh, as you know, a teacher of mindfulness and meditation and Buddhism. And in um, and next week, Wednesday, I'm starting a six week course, which is called uh, Learn Practical Ways for Handling Difficult Emotions. It's on basis of donation and there is home practice uh, in between. And if you do want to uh, learn more about that course, um, I'll type my uh, website address in the chat here. Yeah, so if you would, uh, if you're interested in learning a bit more, you can, you can go to this site, um, yeah, goldmindtraining.com and uh, yeah so it's a practice course and uh, it's tools buddhist tools uh, to learn to um, uh, to relate to the difficult emotion there's so much we can do and uh, well the whole thing is with the difficult emotion is not to um or try not to create more suffering for yourself and not to cre create more suffering for others so by by gently turning towards it and befriending it, we somehow, uh, yeah, start, stop sort of suffering so very much uh, of the difficult emotions. They're not going to go away, but we're building a different relationship with them. So, so that's the whole purpose uh, of these practices. Well, I think I'm on to quarter past uh, three on my watch. So I think it's time for, for Aladdin uh, to take over. Um, and this is Shamash. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> 